So for many years as a pastor, maybe if you're a church leader, you have felt the same way. I would be like, could y'all just read the Bible? I'd talk to somebody in counseling. Maybe reading the Bible would help, or I'd talk to the congregation while preaching. Y'all ought to read the Bible. And I realized I wasn't giving them the tools to do that. So four or five years ago, instead of shaking the guys in my men's life group, read the Bible, will ya? I said, let's read the Gospel of Luke together, and I will give you every morning some reading prompts to help you understand what you're reading. It's not a devotional, it's a reading guide. Well, that really just sort of mushroomed beyond those original 14, and, and COVID helped because we were really desperate to keep people spiritually connected. And now, every day, there are over 1,200 people who are on an email list to get what we call the Come Alive Daily. And uh, I would love to have you join the Come Alive Daily. What you can do is you can go to the link that's on the screen right now, and when you go to that email link at gsumc.org, you'll see a number of different options that you can sign up for. Some of them might be interesting to you. Some of them not quite so interesting like death notices in the church. However, on the bottom right corner, you can sign up for daily reading prompt. Just click on that link, give your name and your email, and you will be immediately on the list to get the Come Alive Daily tomorrow, starting tomorrow at 5 a.m. In this particular season, we are going through the book of Ezra. Who would ever thought that Ezra could be interesting? Ezra's fascinating, and our people have been able to figure that out. So we're going to go through Ezra and then Nehemiah, and then we'll see where the Come Alive Daily heads after that. My biggest revelation in reading closely and then writing about the letter to the Galatians is Paul's courage in calling them out. And, and I am one of those people, maybe you're the same way, I'm a kind of a conflict avoider and I'm like, oh, it'll work itself out if I don't say anything. And of course that never works. Well, Paul saw that the Galatian churches were falling victim to false teaching that instead of Jesus alone, they were adding to Jesus. And Paul has to call him out, and he does so forcefully, and he does so immediately. The fact that he says, you foolish Galatians. I mean, he just steps right into it. And I am so encouraged by that. And I want that, that my own leadership would be informed by Paul's boldness. So that whenever I notice anybody at Good Shepherd Church adding to Jesus, detracting from Jesus, making the gospel anything but Jesus, I'm able to say, no, 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 no. It is not in Christ among. It's in Christ alone. I'm really eager for people to get in their hands, come alive, Galatians and Ephesians, be, because when I, I do believe that when people read and understand the book of Ephesians, and even something that you're tempted to overlook like the pronouns, the pronouns that Paul uses when he opens up the letter to the Ephesians mean everything. In Ephesians chapter 1, there's all kinds of you and you and you and you and and we're tempted to think, oh, Paul, you are so nice. You are writing directly to me, an American living in the 21st century. He's not. The you is always the people in the Ephesian church. And when you understand that the pronouns mean everything, it doesn't restrict the meaning of it. It opens it up. I can't wait to show you what I mean. So maybe the thing that has me most excited of all about being able to write regarding the epistle to the Ephesians for you is the contrast that I'm able to highlight. We come to a book like a, the book of Ephesians, and we've heard it's a letter, so we think, we think we know what we're doing, and we think it is an example of modern American letter writing. When it's not, the letter to the Ephesians, even though it's called a letter, is actually an example of ancient Greek speech making. You catch the difference? We think it's modern American letter writing when actually it's ancient Greek speech making. 
And when you understand that Ephesians was written to be heard and actually written in a sense to be performed, man, the whole thing just opens up. Because I don't know if you knew this or not, when Paul wrote a letter to a, a, a church, whether it was Galatians or Ephesians or Philippians or Colossians or any one of them, he was never thinking, oh, people are going to take this letter and they're going to sit down and turn on a light and they're going to read it silently because they can all read. No! The majority of the people who were in the church in Ephesus, they couldn't read because, hello, it's in, in antiquity. The few people who could read would take the letter and read it out loud to the gathered church. And so people would experience it with their ears well before they would read it with their eyes. And when you know that's how experience, how Ephesians was designed to be experienced, not read, experienced, man, you get the truth and the depth and the beauty of what Paul is trying to communicate when he brings together this Jewish church, this Gentile church into one new man in Christ.